Let's talk a little bit of Wi-Fi marketing with ZenReach here. I'm pleased to be joined today by uh, Kai Umazawa, who is one of the founders of ZenReach, and he's going to come on and dive deep into Wi-Fi marketing and how you can use it to grow your business. So, Kai, I'm just going to turn it over to you, my friend. Great. First off, Eric, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to chat with you today. Um, really excited about this as a product uh, product person, one of my favorite ways to talk about the company is through the product. So I'm really looking forward to diving in under the hood and, and sharing it with uh, everyone. Um, we'll jump right in here. Before we jump into the product, though, I thought for some of your viewers who might not be familiar with the company, it might be worthwhile to do just a really quick run through of you know, why, who we are, why we exist, uh, what, what we believe, uh, and then really happy to jump into the specifics. Um, so the reason we started ZenReach was over the past several years, there's been a lot of talk in digital marketing um, about e-commerce and online. There's so many more apps out there. Uh, it's very easy now for everyone to start an online store. And as a result of that, a lot of digital marketing has been focused and tailored to online. Uh, we at ZenReach, though, have always believed that uh, the real world is still a great channel and a great way to interact with customers. Uh, you regularly hear that customers, if they really love a service, a product, or a brand, they actually prefer to shop in store than online. Um, this might come as a surprise to a lot of people, but believe it or not, the vast majority of commerce, almost 90% still happens in the real world today. Uh, and so it's important not to ignore that. Um, and then finally, your, your store is a great channel. Uh, we find that customers spend more in store than they do online. And so given all of that, we really wanted to help brick and mortar stores, real world, world stores, uh, get all the benefits of digital marketing, but in the real world. Um, and so what are some of those benefits of uh, digital marketing for e-commerce today? Really quickly, this probably isn't news to everyone, but online, one of the huge benefits you have is data. And specifically, you have identity of your customers. You know who your customers are. Uh, you know how they behave with your brand online. And that allows you to do some uh, pretty cool things uh, in your marketing that help grow your business. Specifically, it lets you segment and target, which means it lets you treat each customer differently in the way that's most appropriate to them. Um, it lets you measure whether or not the things that you're doing in your marketing are actually resonating with your customers. And then finally, it lets you double down on the things that are actually working. So one thing that I've always heard from the customers that we partner with is it's hard to know what's working. Uh, you know, you know, you need to do marketing, you know, you need, you want to be growing your business, but it's not always clear and digital what is and isn't uh, making an impact. And so we looked at this and said, gee, in the real world, it's actually really hard to do that. While I might know my most loyal customers and my favorite customers by name, it's actually really hard to understand their behavior. Uh, it's really hard to keep track of who's showing up when, how frequently, what are their preferences. It's really, really hard to, uh, to measure whether or not the things that I'm doing in my digital marketing is actually resulting in real world foot traffic into my store. And then because of that, it's really hard for me to double down on what's working uh, and be really confident that the things that I'm doing in my marketing are resulting in, uh, in improvements to my bottom line. And so we at ZenReach said there needs to be a way to, to help real world businesses get the same sort of benefits that exist in digital marketing online and bring that to the physical world. Um, you know, we, we like to say that online there's, there's users and there's websites and you can measure the interactions between them, but in the real world, there's people and there's storefronts. And how do we, how do we capture that same dynamic between people and storefronts in, in the real world? And so, the way that we've approached this is not too dissimilar actually to how it works online, which is online, there's all this data on the website and we've said, you know what? Hey, there's a lot of data today in, in retail stores, in, in brick and mortar stores. Your point of sale is cloud managed. You probably have a Wi-Fi system. You might have a loyalty app. You have all these different pieces of in-store data today that are tied to your customers and their identity. And you can use that on a one-to-one -one basis to to build behavior. 
And we also said, gee, if similar to online, you could do this across a huge network of users, that would be even more beneficial. So ZenReach has gone out and built a network uh, of over 42 million users. And then from there, you can use that behavior of that network to do the same sort of segmentation and targeting, tailoring that marketing to your customers. Uh, and then, of course, using that in-store data to also measure whether or not it's working. Um, so in a lot of ways, by, by, by what, what you're doing, in yeah. essence, is by identifying these devices as they come in your store, you're, in essence, cooking your visitors, but as they come into your store. That is the perfect analogy, Eric. Um, you know, online, there's a cookie on the website, and we just asked ourselves, how could you recreate that if instead of a website, you had a storefront? Uh, we started with Wi-Fi. Um, and so how that works is when a customer walks into your store, they probably have something called a smartphone in their pocket. A lot of people are walking around with those today. And those smartphones are constantly searching for Wi-Fi networks to connect to. Uh, when and if they do choose to log in, uh, we ask them for an email address. That's that identity portion. Uh, and we match that email address with the device that they're using, very similar to how a cookie would match a browser to a user. And then moving forward, every time that customer comes back, we're able to see that person again because their, their device is again searching for that network. And we see that it's the same device that logged in prior. And we're starting to detect every visit, building that profile, very similar to what happens online. Um, and one of the benefits of working with uh, a company like ZenReach is we're not just doing this at, at one store, but we're doing this across stores so that we can help you really understand your customer base, even if they're not necessarily logging into the Wi-Fi at your specific store. Right. I think that's really important. That's what caught my attention. So let's say I go into a, a restaurant up here in Fort Collins nearby me. They happen to be doing ZenReach. I log on to their Wi-Fi. Boom. They've got my information. They, they, I'm now part of their database. But then I go to you know, uh, a retail store over in Denver. And if they happen to be using ZenReach as well, when I walk in, you automatically are recognizing that mobile device and saying, hey, Eric just went into that store. Now, I haven't necessarily given you permission to contact me, but at least you now have some metrics of people who are coming into your store, right? That's absolutely right. And so we want, cool. we, we want uh, uh, our customers to have vacation. They can still learn a lot from the ZenReach network of the types of people that are walking in. How often are they coming? How frequently are they coming? Are they losing a lot of their most loyal customers that they might not be aware of? So there's all sorts of benefits to being able to uh, see more of your customer base, get insights from more of your customer base than just a select few. Very slick. So what can you do once you have uh, all of this understanding of your customers, which is super important? Um, well, the first thing you can do is, is start to treat them differently. Segmentation, which is really important. If you think about how you might interact with a customer in your store today, if it's someone you see all the time, you would probably treat them pretty differently than someone who you're seeing in your store for the first time who might not be familiar with your, with your products and your services. Then what you can do is once you have that behavior and you understand who's different in your customer base, you can then reach out to them in the appropriate way online. So for some of your most loyal customers who love your brand and, and want to interact with it regularly, they might be folks who are most interested in every new release and every promotion and every change to your business that you might have. But for folks who are still early in their relationship with your brand and your product and your services, it might be worth more general information or helping them get to know your products. Once you're activating or reaching out to these customers in the appropriate way, you then want to understand, is, is it actually working? Is reaching out to this particular segment of my customer base resonating with that segment? And the way that we do this at ZenReach is uh, something pretty special. We call it our walkthrough rate, which is... For a, for a given campaign you've run, and we'll get into this in a second, whether it's an email campaign or a Facebook campaign, the people who were a part of that campaign, who saw that campaign, did they actually physically walk into your business within seven days of being exposed to, to that campaign? And this is really important because this is taken for granted online. Every single campaign that's run digitally has a performance metric associated. 
Did it drive website traffic? Did it drive online purchases? And those are the uh, measurements and information that help online marketers make better decisions moving forward to grow their businesses. So we want to provide that exact same insight to brick and mortar retailers as well. And we can tell them, hey, you sent out this newsletter last week. Guess what? That actually was really effective at driving folks in the following week. Or maybe most interestingly, here's something you've been doing pretty frequently for a long time. And guess what? It's actually not working. Right. People are, are unsubscribing from that faster than they're coming into your store. So right. insights in both directions can be very helpful. Right. Both positive and negative. That's right. That's absolutely right. And then what you do is you take those learnings and then you apply them to your marketing going forward. And, and uh, what we pride ourselves at ZenReach is we want to automate as much of this process as possible so that a lot of the work is uh, out of the hands of, of the brand, the, the business owner, the marketer, and we just share with them the insights so that it's as easy as possible to, to keep their marketing operations moving forward. So I thought this might be a natural place to jump into the product, Eric, unless there are any, any questions up to this point. No, I think it's a good place. There are a few questions that have come through, but uh, that may tie in, uh, I think, as you're going through the product. So I'm going to hold off these questions, guys. Uh, I know you got some questions in, but um, I think they're going to fit in better as you get into certain places within your system. Perfect. Okay. Well, believe it or not, the place that I, I love to start when we're talking about the ZenReach product is actually not the product that our customers are paying for, the, the web dashboard that they get to log into. I love to start with the experience that their customers will have in their store, because I think it's really uh, the start of the ZenReach journey and the start of the relationship between a customer and a retailer. And so what you're looking at here is what we call is our hotspot. Uh, you'll notice it's for a brand Growler USA here, and we allow businesses to customize and brand this to their look and feel. We have a lot of out of the box options to keep it really easy to set up quickly. We can pull in, uh, you know, things from your Facebook page, et cetera, really easy. And all your customer has to do to go online is click go online. When they do that, they're presented with a few different ways that they can get online, either by connecting with their email address or potentially some social profiles. They punch in their email, hit connect. If you'd like, you can ask them an additional question, which will help with segmentation later, which we'll talk about. And then once they hit connect, they're online and that's it. It's really easy for them. Uh, and then you can use this real estate uh, after the fact to promote anything you'd like. So you can see sure. that there was a, a mobile app promoted there and then we've been redirected. And then I, as the business, I'm sure I could go in and I could actually modify that if I want. A hundred percent. You can uh, direct it to a particular promotion, a website. We also have some out of the box pages you can use for promoting apps or specials or um, collecting additional feedback. So there's a bunch of different purposes, but the main goal is to get your customer online as quickly as possible um, and as seamlessly as possible. Because remember, when they're in their business and they're connecting to, to your Wi-Fi, they want connectivity. And so we want to represent your business really well and make that very easy to do. Um, in that flow, though, there's actually a bunch of, uh, no pun intended, there's a bunch of other things happening under the hood. So what just happened in that process was uh, we took that email address that I entered in and we matched it with something called the MAC address of the device. It's a sort of like a fingerprint or a barcode that's unique to this device. So that later when we see that device come back into the business, we'll know that it's Kai at sunreach.com. A couple other things that we've done is we've validated the email address with some of our partners to make sure it's a valid email address. And we've also gone out and pulled in additional demographic data uh, on the customer as well to help with your segmentation. All of that happened in that flow. And where this data ends up is for you and your uh, ZenReach page that I'll jump into here. So what you're looking at here is the ZenReach merchant experience or business experience. This is what every one of our customers gets access to. And I've started here on what we call as the customer database. Every single person who logs into your Wi-Fi is ending up in this database. And they're not just ending up as an email, but they're also ending up with uh, that demographic data that we pulled in through that process. So you can see here, location, age range, gender. We've also been able to pull in um, profile pictures from some social networks, but we're also enriching that data with that person's visit behavior moving forward. 
So every time we see that person come back to your business, we're going to increase their visit and we're going to let you know when they were there. And so we call this a living, breathing customer database where once one of your customers agrees to be a part of your brand, you'll have that moving forward for your marketing purposes. Does that all make sense, Eric? It does. And of course, from here, you can slice and dice all you want. As you can imagine, there's a bunch of uh, features that are super easy to use if you want to filter based on, you know, the last time people came to your store, or how many people or how many times they've come. You can come in here and label them all differently and segment them for your marketing purposes. But the really beautiful thing is that this is just going to be updating automatically. You know, once you plug in that ZenReach hotspot, anytime someone logs in, they're going to end up in here. And every time they come back and visit, it's automatically going to be updated. So there's nothing you have to do. No more comment cards or, mm -hmm. you know, manual data pulls from systems to get access to your customer uh, information. Kai, there was a really good question that came in, I think is germane to, to, to right here. And I thought this was good from Jason. Um, what if customers don't use Wi-Fi much of the location um, or, or, or as, as cell phone signals keep getting better, are people going to still want to use Wi-Fi or is this kind of a, of a declining opportunity? I think that was a very astute question. Yeah, definitely. And, and this is certainly something that, that we hear a lot. I, the first thing I'll say is that I promise you uh, it's happening way more than you might suspect. So most uh, people, when they start working with ZenReach, find that this is actually their, their fastest growing uh, customer database channel for them. So much, much faster than their website, much faster than anything else they've been doing in store. Um, and so the first thing I would say is that it's probably a bigger opportunity than you might you might realize. And, and we have customers who collect uh, hundreds of, of new customers into their database every month at a single location. So, so it's a bit, might, maybe bigger opportunity than people might expect. In terms of Wi-Fi uh, and, and signals and, and data uh, becoming faster through cellular networks, the really interesting thing we've seen is that we've actually seen the rate of our signups increase over time. And the reason I think that is, is that while uh, data speeds might be getting faster, so are, uh, so are all the applications and demands of what we want to do on our, on our phones, right? So people now want to, believe it or not, they might want to pull up YouTube in your store, right? They're not just checking email anymore. They're doing lots of rich activities. And so we've actually seen our, our collection uh, increase o over time as data speeds have, have increased. And then the last thing I'll say on the note is, is Wi-Fi is, is one data. ZenReach really aspires to help uh, at any in-store data point. So I'll give you one example of this, but something that's become very popular over the past few years are cloud managed point of sale systems and email receipts. So you're giving your customers the ability to punch in their email to receive an email receipt. We look at that as just another opportunity to build this database and see that customer data on an ongoing basis. So we really aspire as ZenReach to uh, match whatever the data capture is to your business and your customers. And, and we're going to continue to add more and more methods to do that over time. Okay. And by the way, and I know this is not, you know, one story doesn't make a, 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 it, uh, it a general truism, but here in Northern Colorado, I don't care if you've got AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, I mean, there's, there's a million people up here and it is so spotty that, you know, use of Wi-Fi is, is everywhere. But like you said, that, that's just one touch point. There are other touch points. There's some other questions that are coming here through that are really good, but I'm going to wait until you go a little further in. Perfect. So then the next question we get is, okay, great. I have this automatic customer database. It's growing. It's updating every time uh, people come back to my store. But what do I actually use this for? Well, because it's updating in real time, you can start to use it for marketing. And the, and the first example I'm going to show is something that almost all of our customers use. And it's our smart campaigns, our smart emails. A lot of people, when they start working with ZenReach, their email strategy might be to send one email newsletter out to all of their customers every month. But because we have that visit data, that behavior profile, we can actually start to segment and automate the campaigns that we're sending out. So what these are, these are automated email triggers that will send out a, a campaign to a customer based on visit behavior. This particular business has set up a few different campaigns. They have a first time customer campaign. This will send after the customer's first visit to their store. Uh, we have a repeat campaign. This will send after two visits. 
Uh, we have a loyal campaign. This will send every 10 visits, very similar to a, a loyalty program. And then this one's very interesting. It's what we call as a, a lost customer campaign or a lapsed customer. It's an email that will be sent to a customer who has visited at least twice, but has not been back in 14 days. And of course, all of these campaigns and all of these triggers are, are customizable to your business, your brand, what's appropriate for your customer. And you can set up as many of them as you'd like. But what will end up happening is if we pull up the last customer one here, what you can see is if I go to Growler all the time and I stop coming, that will be reflected in that customer database. Zenreach will automatically detect that and will automatically send me this promotion from Growler to get 20% off my next visit. Uh, and that will send to me uh, automatically, right? Once it's set up, you set it up, you forget it. What's really cool then is we also talked about measurement, right? How well is this actually working? Well, we can see that the system has automatically sent 280 of these and you get all the traditional uh, metrics like open rate here uh, for email and click-through rate, but you also get this other metric. WTR stands for walkthrough rate. And what this is telling you is of those 280 people who had stopped coming to Growlers, 8% came back after receiving this email within seven days. And so you can start to see here are campaigns that are actually driving in-store traffic for, for my store. And again, you get all the regular uh, email metrics you might have in terms of send, open rate, clicks, et cetera, but you also get walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how you can evaluate whether or not um, the, the promotion or or the messaging that you're sending out to this particular customer segment automatically is actually working. This is really good. So question for you, Kai, how would this work if, you know, let's say I've already built up a nice database on, on MailChimp and I have other things or I have automations that are coming through through something like an active campaign that I've set up. Your system looks like it works great for these emails that are coming in based upon the, the capture and some automations and it's, it's a nice out of the box. Can you integrate though in with other email or CRM systems if I want to instead, you know, kind of take your data but push it into a more centralized system I'd be using, maybe using for my business? Yeah, definitely. So um, uh, there's a few different options there. The first thing I can say is you absolutely can do that if you'd like. So we can push uh, in either direction, either pull in from external sources or push out. The one thing that you might lose or you will lose uh, through doing it through other systems is we're not able to do the walkthrough rate through other systems because we need to monitor who you're actually emailing and then monitor whether or not they're showing up um, to measure whether or not that that's, that campaign is being effective. And it'll be tough for us to automate and trigger on the visits. With that being said, we can push the contacts. We can push the, the, the visit information, um, it just won't be as automated and the measurement might not be there, but we do have some customers that really like their templates, really like particular products, and we wanna make sure to, to serve them well. The other thing I can say is that, um, you know, while we do have these smart campaigns and automated campaigns, we also have more traditional campaigns as well. So if you do want to import uh, your CRM into Zenreach, um, we can merge that with your visit-based CRM and uh, also send uh, one-time messages out to those folks as well. And you'll also get walkthrough rate um, with, with those emails as well. So you have a couple different options, but we try to support our customers in the way that's, that's best for them. Okay, so what do they want to just stick within your system? And then imagine you have other ways of capturing emails that could feed in. So this could just, this could be the email system. It's also tied to Wi-Fi, or it could be more of a Wi-Fi marketing platform that could be tied into an email marketing automation platform. That's absolutely right. We have folks who um, sign up and say, okay, this is gonna, you know, 5X my database growth. And that's primarily why I'm interested. And then maybe over time they learn like, okay, I, I really love this automation. I really love this measurement. And so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to do a one-time import into Zenreach from my MailChimp, if you will. I'm going to, uh, we also have, you know, website collection. It's very similar to what any uh, email marketing product would have. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to drop the email collection, sorry, the website collection in. I'm going to hook up my point of sale and I'm just going to have all of that living and breathing in this system so I can uh, have it all live in one place. Okay. So this is one example of how to interact with your existing customers who are 
logging into your Wi-Fi. And we, you know, what I like to say is hopefully if you're doing this well, you're taking those new customers, you're turning them into repeat customers and then into loyal customers. And then if any of them ever lapse or you lose them, uh, we can try to bring them back. But there's also ways to use Zenreach to try to get new customers as well. And so we have a product that we call as our advertising product here, which allows you to not only uh, get your brand in front of customers who have already been in your business, but get your brand in front of people who Zenreach thinks would like your business, but have not been there just yet. Um, so here's an example of a, of a campaign page for a bar. You can see there's lots of different campaigns on here. And what's really interesting is what Zenreach can do is say, okay, you know, we know what your most loyal customers look like, right? We've seen it in the database. They come all the time. Why don't we try to find people who behave like your most loyal customers in the real world, but haven't been to your business yet? Maybe show them an ad on Instagram or Facebook and then using that walkthrough rate, measure whether or not that results in them coming into your business. And so that's exactly what we've done here. What we've done is we've gone out and found people online that we believe, based on our data, are a good fit for this bar. Uh, we've taken the ads that they're already doing on Facebook and Instagram, but instead of showing them to the people they were already showing them to, we showed them to the Zenreach audience. And then we measured and said, how many of those people did we show the ad to? How many people clicked? And then this bolded number here is how many people actually walked into the business within seven days of seeing that ad. And so again, this is really exciting because these are new people to the business. These are not people who have been in or detected by our Wi-Fi before. Um, so I'll pause there because I know that's a lot of information. Does that all make sense, Eric? I think it makes sense. Basically, you, it seems like you've got, a, you've got an integration with Facebook ads. Is that what it looks like what you're doing here? And then what you're doing is you're building almost like lookalike camp, geo-targeted geo lookalike campaigns based off the data of the people who are coming into that store. That's right. And then we're able to offer really cool insights as a result of that. So for this campaign, one thing that's interesting is that Facebook drove more walkthroughs. So more people walked into the business after seeing that on Facebook than on Instagram. We hear from our customers a lot. I got to be on Instagram. I got to be on Instagram. And for a lot of businesses, that's right. Their customers might be on Instagram. But what we're seeing here is actually this Facebook campaign performed better and not better on a clicks or impressions basis, but based on a walkthrough basis. People who, people who you've detected have come back into the store. So there are a couple of good questions that came up regarding this. Um, right. One question came up, said, can we use the Zenreach audiences within our own ad accounts? Can we, in essence, essence, as importable audiences, or do we have to do this through the Zenreach interface? So uh, we have to do this through the Zenreach interface today. And, and the reason for that is that, as I alluded to, this each is actually able to find other people in your neighborhood from our, our network. And so that data we need to keep inside of, of our four walls and run through through our program. Got it, got it. There was one other question here that I thought was really good. Um, so can we do this kind of advertising for only those people who log in or can we also match passerby? People who people, people who have come in, you recognize the SSIDs, but we don't necessarily, they haven't given us permission that's right. And so it's for both. And that's why we have to operate it through our system. If you want, you can absolutely target your existing customers, people who have logged in. We would call that retargeting. Um, but you can also go out and find those walk-by people, the people who are in the neighborhood, you know, visiting places that your most loyal customers visit or show similar behavior. And we'll go out and find those people and, and try to get them into your business as well, even when we know they've never been there before. Got it. So basically with the advertising, even if they haven't shared their email with them, as long as you are recognizing the SSID, you can then go target them or target lookalikes on, uh, on Facebook ads, right? That's, that's, that's right. And one thing to clarify here, Eric, is we won't share those emails uh, right. with you, right? We'll, we'll uh, run the campaign. We'll let you know how well it's performing but we're going to give you full access to people who have logged into your hotspot, who have shown a relationship with your brand. 
when it comes to uh, acquiring new customers through our network, we'll, we'll use that data. We just won't share those, those emails, specific emails uh, with right. other and that has to do with the, with the opt-in and the privacy issues and, and things like that, which was a, a couple other questions that came through. If you, if you, if you, I don't want to dive into all the legal stuff too much, sure. but there were some questions that came up that said, okay, um, when people opt into your Wi-Fi, do they have to specifically give permission to, for you to receive their email address? And I've, I, we, we've done a lot of stuff on GDPR and CCPA and all this other stuff. So I have some thoughts on that too, but I want to hear your, your reaction. Yes. Yeah, so in that hotspot login flow, uh, there's uh, the opt-in is just prior to that go online button. And so they are opting in uh, to uh, the Wi-Fi, but also to receive marketing from your business, uh, et cetera. And, 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 all the, all the goodness that's related to ZenReach. Our stance as ZenReach, though, is that um, we want to give you 100% access to your customers, but we also understand that, you know, you, Eric, if you've been to Kai's Coffee Shop, but you've never been or you've never logged into, you know, Mike's Pizzeria, um, we shouldn't be giving Mike's Pizzeria access to your customer information just because you've walked in. And so if Mike's Pizzeria is a ZenReach client, we'll help him run those campaigns and we'll help him know how well they're performing. But we are not going to uh, give him Eric's information unless Eric explicitly logs in, consents, um, and shows that he'd like to receive uh, direct correspondence from Mike's Pizzeria. So that's how we manage uh, our data governance in our, in our privacy model. Okay. And if you guys, if you have any questions on this or you want to know more specifics about like GDPR compliance, or if you have concerns about CCPA compliance, the California law, um, just, you can just reach out to ZenReach on those. I don't want to dive too bit into the legal stuff, but suffice it to say, I think every business is thinking about these kind of privacy implications these days. Definitely. And uh, you can imagine as a, as a marketing tool, we think about it a lot and our stance is we want to make sure we do what's best for our our clients. And typically that's also what's best for the end user as well. So we have a, a bunch of tools that we've built um, to both help the end users, the patrons in the business, as well as, um, as well as the merchants uh, govern all the data and make sure that, that everything's buttoned up and taken care of. Okay. I want to highlight one last thing on the advertising product here, um, because I think it's, it's tells the, the online to offline story pretty well. Um, and this is just a standard report that you can see in any of our, any of our advertising campaigns. And what we're looking at here uh, is the demographic breakdown of the people who saw this ad. So you can see impressions just means that someone saw this ad. And you can see based on the targeting, you know, 24% women, 75% uh, men, you know, a, a, a pretty even distribution of, of age, you know, pretty big focus on mobile. If I were to look at who engaged with that ad online, so who actually clicked on the ad and showed interest in the brand. So what clicks, you, likes, shares. Exactly. What you, exactly. What you'd see is that it looks pretty similar, right? Sure, maybe there's a, a few more women in there, but generally speaking, it looks pretty similar. And so if you were only looking at online measurement in your digital marketing, you'd assume that this ad is resonating really well with its target audience. What's pretty striking though, and this actually happens quite a bit at ZenReach, is if we look at who converted in store, who actually came into the business as a result of this ad, there's a huge change here, hmm. right? So all of a sudden men and women are flipped and all of a sudden we see all the all the foot traffic is coming from a very specific age range. And so why I want to point this out is I imagine that, you know, even if you're a brick and mortar store today, you're probably still doing a ton of digital or you're at least dipping your toe in and you're giving it, giving it a shot. I really want to point out that just because you're doing digital though, and you're using the traditional tools, you might not be looking at the right signals for whether or not what you're doing is working and you might be drawing insights from the wrong signals. And so we always try to tell our clients, you know, don't just assume because someone liked your Facebook page or someone clicked on your ad that they're coming in your store. And, and don't just assume because your Facebook page has a particular demographic that's been following it, that those line up with the people who are actually going to come into your store. You don't want to use buying these, from you. Right. 
That's right. That's right. You don't want to use what we would call our online approximations to make assumptions around who your marketing is really going to resonate with. And so, you know, this is a little bit in the weeds. This is definitely a lot of data, but I just like to show it because I think it really uh, tells the story of how the real world can operate quite mm -hmm. differently than digital marketing online today. Can I, though, I think that that's brilliant. And I'll tell you why, because I think that applies to all local marketing. I don't care if you're looking at your GMB listing, your Google My Business listing. I don't care if you're looking at, at straight Facebook ads or Google ads or other things. We get caught up in all these high level metrics very early on. And we're not necessarily looking at what is actually driving people to come into the store and actually purchase from us. So I think that's, this is a real uh, interesting uh, highlight that you did here showing how the impressions and clicks skewed one way, but when you look at actual in-store visits, it's skewed a completely different way. I think that's, a, that's just a wise thing for marketers to think about at all. Don't get caught up with all these, too many of the high level early on metrics that are easy to, me to measure. Take a look at the harder stuff. Yeah, and, and again, I'll say this is not uncommon. We see those discrepancies all the time, and those are when we're really excited and can really recommend uh, maybe strategies that uh, the marketer might not have thought of themselves previously. So um, just as you said, keep an eye out for that. Great. So there's many, many more features in the product, um, other types of campaigns that you've run, but I thought that was a good high level of, you know, how customers get into your system, the data, um, a way to engage with your existing customers through automation, a way to potentially acquire some new ones through advertising and the network. And so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll end it here, which is this is our overview page. This is our insights page. You know, for this particular bar, you can see they've been able to collect um, 100 contacts in the past 31 days. You know, when it comes to the smart campaigns, the system based on that visit behavior has automatically sent out 162 tailored messages without any work from the business owner. Those messages have driven 18 people back within into the store within seven days of receiving that campaign. Um, and then we also allow our businesses to either have a point of sale integration or put in an average ticket price. And so based off of that, you know, that would be $360 in incremental revenue for this business, all very transparent. And, and you can see how they're doing building loyalty in their customer base. Um, so this is sort of a, a high level summary of the system. And, and hopefully well, that's enough. like the location dashboard, if you would. It, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think um, there's many, many more features, but at a high level, those are those are some of the ones that I thought might help, uh, might help some of your viewers understand uh, what it is we're trying to offer to the market. Right, so there have been some really good questions come in. If you have some time, I'd love to, to fire off some of these at you here. Absolutely. All right. Um, first question came in. I think that this will be tied in a little bit to the, to the ad side and the measurements and the metrics. So I think this, this will be into your walkthrough rate. Um, Great. How does walkthrough rate compare to Facebook or Google store visit metrics? Really good question. This is from, a, this is from an experienced uh, individual, clearly. So um, there are some other options out there for, for how to try to back into what some of the real world effectiveness is of advertising. And without trying to paint two broad strokes of, of uh, the rest of the market, typically what we see is that those solutions are based off of some pretty big approximations and usually based off of GPS app data. So if I'm a Facebook, if you will, um, you know, I have lots of users. Facebook clearly has lots and lots of users. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some ads to some users and then I'm going to try to see whether or not they're in store based off of the GPS data of their app. Okay. There's a few problems with this though. The first is that uh, GPS is, um, is, is not as accurate as Wi-Fi. I'm sure we've all tried calling an Uber before and you know, the Uber app thinks we're down the street from where we actually are. Um, if you wanna get really precise in-store measurement, it's important that, that uh, it's as close to reality as possible. And, and that's why we think in-store data is more accurate. The other thing to note though, is that not everybody who walks into your store is going to uh, open their Facebook app uh, while they're in your store. And so what we would call that is a false negative, right? There's a lot of people converting on your campaign that uh, might not be picked up by the system. Um, so that's sort of a, a, a second challenge. And, 
And the way that the industry deals with this a lot is typically through um, a lot of approximations and data modeling to try to get at what the true number could be. Uh, whereas with ZenReach, it's a one-to-one. We know this device was there. We know we showed it, the, the ad to this device. Uh, so we can be much more precise there. And then the last thing I'll say is, um, you know, with Facebook in-store, for example, you know, Facebook's sort of uh, grading their own homework, if, if you will, right? Um, they both own the inventory and are doing the measurement. And from ZenReach's perspective, uh, we want to operate across digital channels for you. So whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Maybe you want to do some digital display. Uh, we're really excited that we're working on some pretty cool stuff to even offer things like video, uh, you know, programmatic YouTube in the future. We don't really have a horse in the race for which uh, platform you should be investing in. We just want to show you which one's working the best for your customers. And so the last thing I would say is that ZenReach will allow you to do this across all of those channels in a sort of unbiased way to compare what's really working for your business. Okay. Great question, though. No, that was a good question. It ties in with a, with another question that Mar, that, that uh, Marjana is asking here. So this platform, platform looks really good, but reporting is still theirs, i.e. ZenReach. So I'm wondering, how do you really differ with digital advertising to eliminate false positives? Which I think you just addressed because you're saying, hey, we're looking at the campaign that we sent and we're tying in directly to, did that person kind of reconnect to that Wi-Fi network? That's, That's where right. it's a little more accurate. Um, so anyway, she says, as far as I know, there's not a single partner that can solve this problem, which plagues the physical retailer space. And it, it is a problem. There, there is no perfect measurement Definitely. solution. But what you're saying is, it sounds like you're saying it's a little closer than you could get with just um, geo approximation. Yeah. And, and I think this is a really important point worth making, right? That this is a really hard problem and there's a lot of people trying to solve it. The one thing I'll say about ZenReach's approach, and, and frankly, you know, even outside of ZenReach, just the way that we think about it is ZenReach's approach is to use your data that is in the store. So when you're thinking about GPS or you're thinking about apps, you're really relying on a third party set of data that you're going to have no visibility into. You might not even know which app the data is coming from, and it's sort of a black box, okay? And so, um, you know, accuracy challenges aside, you're going to have to really trust that whatever is going on behind the scenes is, is working well. We've sort of taken a slightly different tact, which is we're going to use your data, right? So you already have a Wi-Fi network in your store. You already have a point of sale system. And our view is what we should be doing is making it really easy for you to use that data in your best interest to look at these measurements, et cetera. And so what we've really started rolling out now is um, a lot of work with our customers during their setup phase to make sure that they feel like all the knobs and, and uh, bells and whistles are tweaked to match their location as best as they can before we ever spend any, any media dollars for them. So, so what does that mean? Well, every store layout is different, right? right. So I have different uh, Wi-Fi signal strength and well time and store hours. And we have to make sure we remove all the IoT devices. Every store is different. And what we'll do is we'll say, we are going to work with you to use your data uh, in, in your best interest. So again, ZenReach aside, I think if you're out there in the marketplace, I would recommend that it's always uh, it's always more effective to use first party data that you own that you have visibility into right that you can port and you can tweak rather than uh, relying on other people's data so that's been our approach in, in working with our clients but I do acknowledge it's, it is a it is a, a hard problem and we just want to be the best solution out there for the marketer okay we'll get out of the the, 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 the techie stuff here and get a little more practical things here sure it's a great question sure. what are some of the types of businesses? that are low-lying fruit for a technology like this? I'm sure restaurants are great, but what other types? Yeah, so uh, it, it depends on um, what your goals are. So restaurants you've highlighted are what we would call are like high dwell time places. So when it comes to ZenReach, these are gonna be places where people are really likely to give you customer data, whether that be through the Wi-Fi or through the point of sale. People spend a lot of time in your store. Microbreweries. Right, exactly. There's just more 
more likely to, uh, to capture more customer data. So we get a lot of restaurants, coffee shops, micro breweries, um, event spaces, right? Where there's a lot of events going on. Um, and those, those types churches. of places are more churches. We actually do have some churches. Uh, we, we have um, a lot of those kind of places and they just collect a ton of customer profiles, which is great for them. So that's, that's the first kind of place. The other kind of place that I would say uh, would be uh, a really good match for ZenReach would be a kind of place where it's really expensive to get customer data. So a good example of this would be something like a auto body shop or a car dealership. You know, if you're, if you have a car dealership or a used car dealership, you're paying a ton of money online today for leads and those leads aren't always good. What if you had a system that could just capture leads for you on the lot, right? People who are actually walking the lot. So what we find is if you're in the business where uh, you have a, a physical storefront and it's really expensive for you to get customer data today, ZenReach is going to be a much more cost effective way for you to do that. So that's yeah, the second I, kind. I, of I can actually almost see like, like a, a, a mall, whether indoor or outdoor, kind of going in on this with all the retailers placing these all over. And then as people go from store to store to store to store to store, you've got all this, this big database you're building up. And we do have some of those as well, you know, strip malls or, or malls that will uh, buy ZenReach on behalf of their, of their retailers. And they sort of sell it as a benefit to the retailers. Hey, we're going to, we're, you know, we're going to um, be able to capture this customer data for you and, and help you market to people who are frequenting our, our mall. Um, so, so again, places where it's really expensive, right. To, to get, to get leads, things like jewelry stores. So right. I think those are a great fit. And then the, the last that I might point out would be, and this is maybe more related to our, our advertising product, um, our attract product, um, places where, uh, it's, it, you're not going to be able to identify a large percentage of people who come into your business. So uh, this would be like retail, for example, right? People can come in and they can spend um, five seconds in your retail store, right? They're just stopping in. They just want to see a product really quickly, right? Even with Wi-Fi or your point of sale or your app, it's going to be really hard to capture that interaction uh, for your marketing purposes today. But if you're working with a partner like ZenReach or someone else who has a network of users, that person might not interact with your business in those five seconds, but they might interact with another one in the network. And you can still benefit from that by working with a partner like ZenReach, even if we can't necessarily directly give you that email address. So that's sort of the third category that I think Attract serves really well. People who just find it really, really hard to capture customer information in their businesses today. Yeah, someone said, "Hey, you, you're, you're mentioning car dealer makes a total makes a total sense. Um, hotels would be another good one um, on right. there. Absolutely, some people are putting in some ideas into the into the comments here. Um, what about things like like uh, uh, dental or healthcare? Because now you're coming into things like HIPAA compliance and things. I don't want to get into the legal stuff, so maybe sure. that's an off question, but sure. Um, so." You know, candidly, we don't do a ton in healthcare today. Uh, what, one thing I will say is ZenReach is very much a marketer's tool, right? And so oftentimes, you know, when I'm meeting with prospective clients, it's a goal from, from using this tool, right? And if you're a dentist's office, it's quite possible that you have all of your, um, all the contact information from, uh, from all of your the people who, whose teeth you work on, all of your clients, uh, and probably you might even know a little bit more about them than ZenReach does, to be honest with you, right? You right, had your, right, right, your right, hands right. In about. So for a business like that, I think the question we would ask is, well, you know, what, why do you want this additional data? What is your marketing goal? How are you going to use What's your strategy? Business? Exactly. And so I think for some businesses, it's much more clear and there's, you know, less access to customer data. There's, uh, it's much harder to build loyalty uh, whereas I know my dentist knows a ton about me and I go there every six months. So, right. um, good point. So it, it's not, you know, completely out of the realm possibility, but I think there's probably more natural fits for us as well. Makes sense. Great question from Janice. Um, which I think might fit into something else that your system does. We didn't touch on. Um, do retailers use a system like this to send customers a message after their visits as kind of a comment card, i.e. how was your meal? Yes. This is going to get into like a reputation kind of, kind of thing. This is from Janice. Yeah, so we do have a uh, widget that 
um, what you would do is you'd set up a trigger, a visit trigger, just like any of the other smart messages or smart campaigns that we set up. And we do have a widget that allows clients to collect feedback um, from their customers. And, and we call it our reputation product, but it's really more of a feedback product. What it does is you can choose which smart campaigns you want to include uh, in your email. And then when the person visits in the email, they'll be asked for feedback uh, on your business. And that feedback will go uh, directly to you. Sorry about that. Want to find some comments here. Uh, but you can see this place has uh, gotten some comments. Everything is the best. I love I this. I want my ashes to be flushed down the toilet. I love that one. A loyal fan. I love the pizza here. Um, so uh, what I love about this question is it's, uh, it's actually a, a really good idea of how to use a tool like this. When someone leave, visits your business and then leaves, they are um, exactly the kind of people who can provide you really good feedback on that experience. And so this is another tool that we see used uh, across all types of, of brick and mortar retailers and customers. And what happens here is when they respond to, to that feedback in real time, what we'll do is we'll actually send that directly to a person of your choice in real time and just open up an email thread between you and that customer so that you can engage more, more directly. Uh, maybe you want to thank them for their feedback and send them you know, a promotion or something. But yes, that is absolutely a, a feature uh, that you can set up and it's all automated and it will end up in, in your ZenReach product dashboard here. That's great. Uh, a couple of quick questions. Do you use your own Wi-Fi devices or routers or can you work with any hardware that's already installed at the customer point of business? Great question. Probably the most common question uh, we get at ZenReach. And the answer is we can do either. So we support almost any uh, sort of, you know, uh, enterprise Wi-Fi access point you might have. If you have a Cisco or you have a Meraki or you have an Aruba, all the popular ones, uh, we can support those. And for those, it's a very easy setup. It's just a configuration in your in your uh, you know, Cisco dashboard or what have you. If you don't have uh, one that we support um, or you're interested in maybe upgrading that hardware because you want it to really serve your customers well, uh, we can also ship you one as well. And, and we, we just choose one of our partners like a Meraki and, and we can work to send you one of those. Okay, uh, this is a good one. Can you track the time that people spend in your location per stay or average stay? Yes, uh, we, we do. Uh, we are able to do that. We call that dwell time. And I don't know that it's turned on on this particular account, so I can't pull it up. But we do have uh, what we would call our, our visit insights. And those would be things like, what are your most popular days of the week? How long are people spending? How many of your visitors are first time to ZenReach? How many have we seen before? Um, so we do have insights like that on, on your insights page here, uh, if it's enabled on the account. Great. Uh, we're having some people who are asking if this is going to be recorded. Yes, this is being recorded. It will be posted to the LMI website by next Friday at the latest. Um, so this is the follow-up on the reputation thing. Can positive feedback can immediately get posted where we want on our website, Yelp or Google? Yeah, great question. So we do not automatically post it, uh, and, but we do give you the option to configure uh, some promotion of pages that you would list it to. So you can post in your Facebook page, uh, Google, TripAdvisor, OpenTable. We do not offer Yelp. Um, Yelp uh, discourages that, but you can certainly set that up. The comments and feedback will not be posted automatically, but uh, people who do have a positive experience have the option of posting it on those on those pages uh, if they'd like. And I we and you can see. Yep. Yep. I was, was going to say I do want to point out because Kai and I talked about this before. Zenreach is very aware of the you know the Google My Business rules with review gating that the you know it's a, it's against it. And if you do review gating with Google reviews, you can actually get those suspended. So uh, we talked about that they have the option that you can actually turn that on or off. They leave it at your discretion. And they make it very clear in the system. So I, I just want to make sure that that and Zenreach is actually very aware of that policy and gives you the capabilities to override that so you're not violating Google's terms of service. 
That's that's absolutely right. We give you all the control, all of these settings um, are, are in your hands. And that's the feedback we've gotten that people would like the control. And so we've done our best just to update our knowledge bases and, and put the controls in place uh, with some info for folks. So we got a lot more questions here, but I want to, we only have a couple minutes left. I want to narrow down some, some of the business aspects of here. Um, is this for United States only or is there international availability? We do have a international availability. Um, uh, we are primarily in North America today, but we do have international availability. Okay. Okay. So get a hold of ZenReach if you have any questions on the international availability. That's the way to do it. By the way, um, contact information, we'll put that with this, but it, you just go to ZenReach.com. And um, I'm sure anybody there will be glad to answer any questions you guys happen to have. Um, can you give us an idea of the pricing structure? Are there ranges, tiers? What's the pricing structure built upon? Yeah, and so we, we have a pretty typical um, you know, software pricing structure that you might see from, uh, from any you know, tool uh, like this online. Um, so it's just based on which of the feature sets you're most interested in. But to give people a sense is we start at 99 bucks a month. So there's definitely uh, you know, great price points with a lot of these features for uh, anybody to get started. Um, but you know, if you don't have big advertising budgets or whatnot, you don't necessarily have to use those features. So uh, there's a price point for everybody and, and we start at $99 a month. Okay, and then uh, Denise said, you mentioned earlier people need to log into Wi-Fi with email in order to be detected, is that correct? That's not necessarily true. They could also log in with, with, with um, I think you had Facebook and... We have up? Google, we have Twitter, uh, we have different social login options. Okay. Um, and they can choose those to log in as well. The great news is that when they log in with those, uh, those services send us their login email. So those emails will still show up in your, in your customer database, even if uh, they don't choose to log in with email. Yep. So even if they log in with a social media profile, you're still gonna get the email contact information. Um, right. I think I'm gonna end with, with this question here. Uh, I know there's some other questions that are good. I'll pass them on to you, Kai. But the, um, the, the last question was, how can agencies best work with ZenReach to offer this as a value add service to their clients? Great question. So we, ha we do work with a ton of agencies uh, and we have um, programs for that. So please reach out if you're interested. And uh, typically what we do is, you know, every agency is offering a, a different uh, mix of services, if you will. So some agencies uh, like to take ZenReach in as is as a tool um, and what they're focused on is more of the marketing strategy and the creative and the content for the marketing so they'll use zenreach as is and and uh and 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 use the tool on behalf of, of a business or a merchant so we have a program for that and please reach out if you're interested similarly we have um, agencies that we work with that maybe do things like websites but don't uh, specialize in um email or, or advertising or, or alike. So for those, we also have a, a referral program as well, where we can work with the agency, uh, service the client directly, but in partnership with the agency uh, to make sure that we're all working together. So we have a few different options, a few different programs there, but I, I highly encourage people to reach out if they're interested. And, and we do have a, a great partner community uh, around the product as well. Sounds great. Kai, thank you very much for your time. I wish we could go a little further. There's still a lot of questions we didn't get to from the audience, but I'll pass those on to you guys. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Kai, really impressed with ZenReach, and I appreciate you taking some time to come on and give us a look under the hood. Likewise, Eric. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.